relevant now. It is such timely technology, it just could not be any more exciting to be engaged with. Solar energy is going to be one of the world's energy sources in the coming decades and, and millennia, and, and this is really critical now to understand the best technologies. The UK faces two main challenges. One of those challenges is to have a sustainable energy system within the UK. The other challenge is to have qualified researchers who can address these problems. It's really important that we generate research where it's actually needed, generate relationships with industry, and then feed back the research from the university back into the supply chain. If you think about it, you know, Sheffield's in the middle of the Yorkshire coalfield, energy. It's been a very important strand for the university for a number of years. The Low Carbon Combustion Centre is a centre that was set up to try and bridge the gap between a university small-scale experiment and what industry might actually want to see. In terms of the portfolio of facilities that we've got here, I don't know of anywhere else in the UK or Europe that quite comes to the same thing. We're working with partners not only in the UK but also in Europe. We're providing policy information to the Commission on Alternative Fuels for Aviation and we're working with companies as far afield as Qatar and Australia. We work with the oil companies, we're working with um, additive manufacturers for the oil companies along with quite a few of the power generators as well. The Sheffield Solar Farm project is all about trying to bridge the gap between our academic research into new and emerging federal tech technology based on plastic materials and the commercial state of the art, crystalline silicon technologies that we have in front of us here, and try and understand what the requirements are for the UK in terms of, of the climate and the weather conditions, and also the built environment in which federal tech technologies are going to be deployed. When I did my PhD, we worked on lab scale, and on a lab scale you don't get very representative data, whereas this is in between the lab scale and the real world. So the, the work that we generate, we hope that will help the real operating power plant. Lots of people are approaching us because of the scale. Now the manufacturer of this was actually JND Thermal Processes, which is a local company. If we can get some of the product that their customers want to put through a rotary kiln, run it through this, we can give them a better idea of the size of the facility that they actually need to design and hence it makes them more competitive. The website is quite a crucial part of our project because it's how we disseminate the data we receive here on the farm back to our users and the interested parties for the project. It's really important that we feed the data that we get from the solar farm back live to our website and that informs users, installers, distributors of actually what the panels are doing performance wise correlated to the weather. We know that the embedded energy within these kind of devices is going to be substantially lower than that for a, a crystalline silicon technology and in the future that should make these emerging technologies lower cost to manufacture. There's really quite a big jump to make the progression from a research cell to a, a commercial product by having this facility here to be able to test and demonstrate different types of solar technology. It informs our research in a way that we wouldn't normally have access to, but it also allows us to engage with the federal tech industry to help the industry learn from the deployment here in the UK. One of our other areas of interest and where my background is, is on aviation. We're looking with the industry and we're working with the likes of Rolls-Royce and Shell to look at alternative fuels. We've started to actually invest in equipment so that we can look at what these various individual hydrocarbons actually are. And one of the reasons why we're working closely with industry is our attention to detail. So we measure things like the unburned hydrocarbons and the carbon monoxide. Because of our calibration techniques, they're all traceable to national standards. So the customer can be assured that the data he's getting is of a very good quality. The Doctoral Training Centre is funded by the UK Research Councils. The aim is very much to train students to address some of the challenges that the UK faces in the longer term. So for eFuture has been set up to address the challenges to a sustainable energy system. We take on 20 students per year, we train them in energy research over a four year PhD and expose them to a wide variety of projects. Some of those projects will be with industry. We work with a wide variety of companies from SMEs through to large enterprises. 
We have a very broad definition of energy, so that could be from energy supply and generation through to demand reduction and reusing of waste energy or heat. We're the UK's leading manufacturer of fuel cells and electrolyzers. Uh, so we are taking renewable electricity input and water, we are converting it into hydrogen and oxygen. That then enables us to store it in a useful form and then we can convert it back again into um, electricity and fuel cells. Our student Laura started six months ago on our PhD project. Laura's work is very fundamental to our company. She's working on the next generation of membranes. Now these go at the heart of fuel cells and electrolyzers. Now the work that Laura is doing complements up the work that we have going on in our own labs. But the difference being that Laura has access to uh, the equipment and the facilities that's a small company we just don't have. I think with an industry-led project, I think it is nice that you can see an actual application to the work that you're doing. And like Chris says, we've got access to a lot of um, sorry, expensive scientific instruments and things to help characterise and work out what the polymers are doing and how they're made and things that I can just utilise that at the university but feed that into the industry project. Yeah. I mean, it gives us access not only to the equipment but to Laura's expertise and her supervisor's expertise as well. So it, it's, it's a win-win for our company. I'm the academic director of Sheffield Siemens One Power Research Centre. We are developing the dielectric drive permanent magnet type generator for offshore one power application. If you try to repair an offshore one power generator, it's going to cost like a million pounds, something like this. So the reliability is very, very important. But meanwhile, if you can improve the efficiency and also reduce the weight, it will reduce the cost for foundation, repairing, everything, installation, for example. So this is what we work on. So Sheffield One Power Research Center originally was planned to be a competence center, but now it's going to be design center as well. We also expanded the number of employment from 20 to 50, so it's a big investment. I am a currently a development engineer within Siemens Wind Power. I've been here since September 2009, uh, coming straight from a PhD, and I'm working on direct drive generators for wind turbine applications. Being a Siemens employee, I have direct contact with the development centre within Denmark. And certainly being based at the university, I also have direct contact with Professor Sue. So I'm literally a direct bridge between uh, both needs. Siemens are gaining benefit by being affiliated with the university because what they perceive is getting a technical advantage over their competitors. We are strong in creating new ideas but meanwhile, we're also very strong for the bridging the gap between the university and the industry. This is why, in fact, our group, we have three spin-off companies. And we not only publish papers, but we also make a prototypes and also develop the prototypes for industry. Therefore, we have a lot of companies come to look for us. We have worked extensively for all major automotive industries such as uh, Nissan, Toyota, Fiat, Volvo, BMW for example. The aerospace side we work with uh, Los Royce for example, Los Royce set up a technology center in our group as well. Sheffield can double the R&D strength of uh, Siemens One Power research. So it will be a very good marriage between a world number one offshore one power company and also a world leading and the research group in the university. The most exciting part of this for me is that the technology that we're developing here is going directly within to the products, into the wind turbines that are actually going to be out there doing the work. And certainly some of the work that we have already done here is already going into some of the series production. So it's already happening. Well, this is the demonstrator. Actually, it's a small demonstrator, only three kilowatt. We are working on at the moment is three megawatt and also six megawatt direct drive for one power generator. The novel thing of this one is this is going to connect to the blades, so it's rotating. In fact, this is the load of our generator. For the generator itself, we don't have the gear, and it's a direct drive. There's no gear. There's a lot of challenge for our research. We need to optimize the design. You have the advantages there, but then you also have a lot of challenges there. Now this is the challenge which we're 
really into the tooth tackle. That is a demonstration of the Saren uh, light emitting diode. That device is close to the final device, and in the moment we call this a bare chip device. The device size is only 0.3 millimeter square. It's a tiny amount of this very tiny this device. However, if you can see this very bright. The current in the moment is only this 20 milliamp. It's a very small amount of the current. However, you can see the bright, bright is so bright. Serum Photonics was created at the back end of 2009 to exploit the technology that uh, Dr. Tao Wang has been working on. There are several reasons why high brightness LEDs are becoming uh, very important, very significant. They are at least an order of magnitude more efficient than conventional lighting. They tend to be a lot brighter in certain applications and incandescent bulbs are being phased out around the world at the moment. If you want the same level of brightness, the cost of manufacture is too high. What Tao has done is to come up with a very cost-effective means of building high brightness LEDs that are typically two to three times brighter than the, the sort of standard product you can get today. Many people have tried to do this in the past. Everybody has failed so far, and for the first time we're seeing uh, Tao's application of this technology is actually working. Absolutely leading edge technology. You know, this big organizations out there have tried to do this and have failed, um, and Tao has now created the prototypes. None of this would have come about without uh, the facilities that exist at Sheffield. What you see here is a clean room. It's located in the 35 National Centre in the UK. This is only the National Laboratory in the UK. They have the comprehensive the facilities which can meet all the requirements for the device fabrication. In order to move to the market, I guess maybe it'll take one or two years. Yeah. Of course, there's a number of jobs we still have to do. In order to move to the mass production, you have to make uh, this process is uh, simplified. The new idea is based on the, all the facilities which are available to the standard optical electronics industry. So therefore, in order to make uh, this uh, serum device, you do not need uh, extra this investment. All of the facilities required for this idea has been available. Without this sort of facility, then it would be almost impossible in the UK to realize technologies that people like Dr. Wang has brought to our attention. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I think. Everything is aligned. The marketplace is growing rapidly. There's global legislation in place that drives the technology forward. There's great technology push as well as technology pull. It couldn't be any better. Every academic really would like to see their ideas, their unique ideas brought to the fore, benefiting mankind, benefiting investors, benefiting themselves. And I think for Tao, this, this has to be a, a dream realized, really.